Greetings in the name of the Lord. It's just such a great opportunity right now to uh, look into that camera, look into the Word, and see some great things. So uh, anyway, uh, prepare yourself. I believe I've got some encouragement for you today, some things that kind of have struck me even the last several days. And I want to share those with you. So uh, get ready. Uh, this is live, so you grab your Bible if you have it right there. Maybe take a note or two. It might, it might, might not be all bad. So I just want to—I want to share a couple things here today that that uh, again may encourage you. So let's go to Acts and chapter 12. And you know this may be an old story for some of you, maybe a new story for some of you. It doesn't matter. It's like myself. I don't know how many times I've read this story, but even in the last several days. It seemed like it, it, it had a greater impact on me. Is that fair enough to say? So, so let's take a look here. In, in, uh, in chapter 12, starting in the first verse, it says, Now about the time, that time Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, a brother of John, with the sword. You know, uh, we look at that and we say, wow, that's a long time ago and that's a lot of things out there. But, you know, you, you have to realize that there's some pertinent things there about people that aren't really friendly to the church. Let's put it that, let's put it that way in a, in a friendly way. And in verse 3, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, wow, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. <clears throat> So when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after the Passover. So basically what he did, it appears that he had these four squads. So basically there were four men each. And so somebody was supposed to constantly guard him uh, around the clock. That's what it was there. Now in verse 5, Peter was therefore kept in prison but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. I want to talk about that just a little bit. You know when it said constant prayer, then uh, if we look into the Amplify, what is a, a constant prayer? It's a fervent prayer. It's one that, you know, if you, um, uh, let, how could I describe this? Maybe you have a, a a pet at your home, maybe a kitty, maybe a dog, uh, you know, that loves to maybe uh, fight for over, like we have a Springer Spaniel that has all these stuffed animals, and, and she loves it when I grab that stuffed animal she's holding and just fight with her, and she's fervently going to keep that that stuffed animal. Does that, that help you what it means? It means you, you're going to take a hold of something, and you don't want to let it go. And so there were a group of people praying for Peter at this time. Fervently, fervently, heartfelt. Uh, they didn't want him killed like Herod had just killed James. So, verse 6, And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now, we're talking about a lot of armament there to keep Peter in chains, locked up, no chance of getting out. <clears throat> so, now, in verse 7, Now, behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. Now, you've got to picture this. Now, he's in chains. He's been locked up. Probably isn't real fun to be in this prison. Uh, I don't think he had TV sets at that time. I don't think that anything there but guards. And so he said, Arise quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. Can you imagine? Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself up and tie up your sandals. Put your shoes on. And so he did, and he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So look at verse 9. These are important things to, to think about. So he went out and followed him and did not know what was done by the angel by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. You know, when, when you look at this, and you've been to really digest this, uh, you know, often there's things in your life, maybe your family's life, maybe your friend, and, and, and you want to pray for them. Well, you know, there's a couple things about this. You can imagine these people, uh, they, were, they were all gathered now. The Bible it makes it clear his other believers were gathered in a house, and they they were concerned. They were they were probably in a lot of fear, but also they were they were definitely determined 
to pray and seek the Lord about this guy, about Peter. And, and then the funny part about this, not funny, that's not a good, a good term, but the amazing thing about it is this all happened and Peter's in a daze. He said, what's going on? It says here, he thought he was seeing a vision. How often have you been prayed for or prayed for somebody? And actually, even though there's something's different, you see, still see yourselves in chains. I think that's really something to think about. Uh, you know, Sandy and I have obviously prayed for a lot of people. We've prayed for people for different things, you know, uh, family situations of healing, what, wherever that might be. And often there's a result, they're better, but they don't realize it. They're still in chains. And, you know, you can take that and think about that right now. Just think about that for a little bit because there's an earnest prayer going on a lot of times. A lot of things are going on, but somehow we get blinded in our, in our thinking and our mind. Of course, this is darkness working, so you don't even see that you're better. Uh, we see that a lot with nutritional supplements. People start taking them, they start feeling better, uh, but they don't realize it. They still want to use the old, uh, maybe I should say, shouldn't say it, but the, the complaining seemed to feel, feel real good before. But often you're better and you don't realize it. Now let's just continue here a little bit. So he, again, he thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and the second guard posts, think about this, they're deep in this prison. They came to an iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. They didn't have to open the gate. The angels, it had all been done for them. Uh, and that's what another point for you right now. There's something that's had you bound up. It's there. Yeah, hey, that door might be open right now. Uh, <laughs> I remember uh, reading an experiment with, um, with sharks in a shark tank. And these sharks were in there and they do whatever they did. But one day they put a, a glass panel in there in the middle of the tank. Well, those sharks, then they'd throw food in the other side. If you can kind of get it, they were, they were trying to bait the shark to go up against that glass. The shark would go up there and bang into that glass and back off. Did that two or three times, and, and you know what they did then? They took the glass out there. You know what would happen? That shark would go up there and stop right where that glass had been because he thought the glass was still there. How many times have you felt in your life or thought about it? You prayed for something. You believe it for something. Your heart's in it. Your friends are paying for you. And actually, uh, all of a sudden, you don't realize it, but that thing isn't there anymore. Amen. Isn't that amazing? Well, it's not that amazing, but it's the way it is. It's, it's just the thing that uh, if there's something held us back, we still somehow think it's holding us back. Even though we ask the Lord to deliver us from it, we believed it, we confessed the scriptures, and yet we, we sit there and we, we, we think we're still afflicted. Isn't that amazing? Well, that may not be you, but I believe it's probably been me a couple of times. <laughs> I'm just being honest about it. So then in verse 12, uh, so when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary. So now again, the story is Peter, uh, the, the angel let him out all through that dark deep, took his chains off, busted those chains off, led him through countless guards and got to the gate from the prison into the street. And they got through that. The gate opened all by itself. Amazing. And guess what? The, the angel left because now Peter has to figure out where he's at. And it says here, uh, he, he uh, probably went down the street and as went to that house where they were praying. In verse 13, and Peter knocked on the door of the gate. A girl named Rhoda came to answer. Then she recognized Peter's voice. Because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. And guess what they said? Now, these are the people been praying continually, fervently, believing, God, heart believing, heartfelt prayers. But here's what they said. But they said to her, you're beside yourself. You know, you're crazy. Uh, yet she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, it's an angel. They just didn't believe it. I mean, they've been praying all this time. <laughs> praying, you know, just believing, but... So now in verse 16, now Peter continued knocking, you know, good Lord. He said, come on, let me in. <laughs> you can feature this. 
And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. How many times when you've prayed for something and God answered your prayers and you were astonished, mm -hmm. what does it say? Well, anyway, God bless, love that, our Lord, our God, because he wants you to have such, he wants you to have success and victory in everything. And you know, part of it is we just have to receive it when it comes. We have to open and say, wow, uh, you know, it's like, um, anyway, so that's the point of this whole thing. And then, but motioning to them with his hand to keep silent, he declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go tell these things to James and to the brethren. And he parted and went to another place. Now it says James, but it's not the James that was killed. It's a different James. Then as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers what had become of Peter. But when Herod had searched for him and not found him, he examined the guards, commanded them that they should be put to death, and they went on down. Now later it tells that uh, Herod uh, thought he was God, and, and he died right there. The, anyway, it's a tough thing. I want you to really realize there's something about this. There's something about believing God. There's something about it. You know, in James, uh, one, of, one of the favorite scriptures, you can go there. But in James, and when you read the Amplified uh, Version of James chapter 5, and it's talking about, uh, you know, healing and, and, and really other things. <clears throat> uh, I'm turning there. I know the scripture, but I'll read it anyway. And in James 5, it talks about healing and various things. It's in verse 16. Uh, confess your trusted best to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And that's just a, in that situation, it's not so matter of bleeding all over about how bad you are, none of that. It's kind of like that humility. It's kind of like, it's kind of like you're willing to, it, it, you're willing to be ready to receive what the Lord has for you and ready for your friends to pray for you. It's, it's a heartfelt uh, not heartfelt, but it's a humility that we must have. We can't get so raised up, think, well, we don't need any help from anybody else. But it says, confess your uh, trust, uh, pray for another, one another that you may be healed. Then it says here, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And if you read the amplified version of that, it's, it's I want you to get a hold of this because it's the earnest heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. When you issue your prayers in faith, uh, brothers and sisters, it's just not a matter of prayer, you know, and I, I, oftentimes people don't understand this and they'll say one quick little prayer, well, God heals somebody. Does. No, no, we're talking about getting in there. We're talking about getting the heart of God, getting lined up with His, because He wants the, He wants results for you, always. Don't listen to somebody that says, well, maybe he will, maybe he won't. If you know that he's, His desires for you to be healed, you to be saved, you to be prosperous, all those things, and you're praying for those kind of things, I want to tell you something. Get your heart involved with it. How bad do you want this? How bad? How bad do you want this for your friends? Uh, for me, there, the, the, it's so it's such a thing had come over me many years ago with confessing daily for months and months the 91st Psalm, and and it got a hold of me that God wanted my family protected. No weapon formed against my family shall prosper. Uh, no tongue that rises against my family shall prosper, or my marriage, or me, or my friends. So there's a heartfelt thing in there. It's like. This is this is it, and you know I want to tell you something. You get you get that heartfelt going. You realize how how much God loves you, how much He wants the greatest things for you in your life, and you get that anchored in your heart. And when you go up against something, you're in battle, and you're not seeing results right away. You just stay in there. Say no, no devil. Yeah. We're going to have results here today because the Word of God says, "Whatsoever things I desire, when I pray, believe I receive them, I shall have them." Mark eleven twenty four. I mean, it's a belief system. It's in your heart. It's in your heart. Heartfelt. I know if you're listening today, you know what I'm talking about. There's things in your heart, man, your brother and sister, you're not going to let go. And that's where the Lord is. That's where the Lord really gets anchored. And I have to tell you, in the last few days, I've just had kind of a, uh, kind of went back a little bit about, uh, about how wonderful it was 
to get born again, to get, get the Lord in my life. It set me free 40, actually 46 years ago this month. And I thought about how much I love the Lord, how much He loves me. It, it's just the love of God. It's just, it just flows through you when you really think about what a great God we, we serve. And so that's the message I wanted to put out today. Uh, I, I'm going to end this with a 25th Psalm. There's so much in that Psalm I could read, but I'm going to just read here from the 12th verse in closing. Uh, uh, who is the man that fears the Lord? And when I look at that fears the Lord, I, that, that, to me that's, the fears part means I look to him as my source and my provider. I look to him for my answers. I look to my Lord for that. I don't look to my friends. I don't look to the political realm. I don't look to all the news. I don't look to that. I look at the Lord. I, it's the, the man that looks to the Lord, I would say, in, in my own commentary there. And then him shall he teach in his way. That's the one that God's going to teach you. That one that you, when you're looking to him and he realizes he's your source, he's going to teach you. Uh, in verse 13, he himself shall dwell in prosperity. This is the promise of it. He himself shall dwell in prosperity and his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those that fear him. There you go, the secret. <laughs> the secret. See, uh, you, you see the people who were praying for Peter, uh, that was their secret. They loved God. They, they saw what was going on. They saw the powers of be wanting to kill their people and Peter. But you see, the, but the secret in their heart was the empowerment, the empowerment. I talk a lot about empowerment, but see, that's what it's all about. He empowers you when you look to him and you believe him and you love him. And, and then in verse 14, and he will show them his covenant. He'll show you all these things. You, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's kind of like uh, the ways of God. When we reach out, that's, we want to know his ways, want to know how it operates. Well, he's very willing to show us, and when we sh he shows us, uh, then even more power. But in verse 15, my eyes are, are ever towards the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. God bless you. I'll tell you what, it's a good time to love each other today, and it's a good time to love the Lord. Maybe stop and just think about your rush life and think about those things that somebody says, well, you need to do this, you need to do that. Well, you know what? It's not that kind of a day today for, for, for you. It's a good day just to love the Lord and realize how, how loaded loaded he is with benefits for you that's a scripture too but god bless you love you if you have never made jesus the lord of your life it's very very easy you just simply say jesus i want you to come into my life and set me free i want you to teach me your ways god bless you sandy and i love you hope you're having a great day today amen